Notorious meat cleaver killer Nellie Goller has escaped from Windhoof Psychiatric Hospital, killing several staff there. Police believe she is responsible for the slaughter of a family in Brunswick. There is a massive manhunt underway, and the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office is urging citizens to stay indoors. May I ask what you folks are doing out here in the middle of nowhere? You're looking for that crazy lady, aren't you? It's your door lock. Welcome to Terror at Collinwood. I am your hostess, Penny Dreadful, and I am transforming into Danielle. And welcome to the show. I am so very excited and honored to welcome my guests today, beloved by Dark Shadows fans for her portrayal of the tragic child ghost Sarah Collins, sister of Barnabas Collins. Sharon Smith Lentz started her career in show business as a model for Sears Roebuck and Company catalog at the tender age of five years old. She did runway work for several fashion houses in New York City and voiceovers for radio commercials. In 1965, when Sharon was eight years old, she portrayed a character named Susie Carter on the soap opera Search for Tomorrow. Today, Sharon is still acting and making appearances across the country, as well as taking on producer roles. She played the character of Dorothy in the 2014 short film On a Country Road, which was directed and produced by my other guest, Barry Dodd, with his uh, wife, Karen Dodd. What a great combo these two are, and longtime Dark Shadows fans as well. Uh, uh, Barry uh, is also known for the indie series award-winning web series Ragged Isle, which is drenched in dark shadows. Uh, and Barry and Karen are also the masterminds behind the recent vampire-themed graphic novel Night is Falling, which oh. is really cool. I read it and I, I loved it. Uh, it has a very spooky, cool Stephen King, Stranger Things total vibe. I loved it. Um, so uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, it's such a pleasure to have you both here. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's thrilled it's to so be nice here. to see you. <laughs> oh, it's good. So you good know, to see you both. It's great to see you both. It's like a Coast City Comic Con reunion here because that's <laughs> where I first met the two of you. And hey, Sharon, look, look what I still have. One of oh, my favorite. I recognize that little person. Wow. <laughs> my favorite Dark Shadows collectibles here, which is a Sarah Collins tote bag, which I got from you at Coast City Comic Con. And uh, I remember telling you at the time I was there as Penny and uh, I was so thrilled to see that you were a guest there. And uh, you were absolutely the person I was most excited to meet. At Thanks Coast to City Barry. Com Comic Con was <laughs> that where, you, where you, you moderated that panel, too, which was a great mm -hmm. Great yeah. panel with Sharon. So, so you you hooked that up there, Barry, with uh, Sharon. Barry Apple invited City. me. It was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was friends with Tristan, the gentleman that puts on the yeah. thing, and and I happened to be friendly with Sharon through the interwebs at the time. We hadn't worked together, but we were. She was aware of a project that I was working on called Ragged Isle, and yeah. um, and uh, so we just. Uh, I was like, hey, you want to come up to Maine? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, talk to me a little bit about um about how all of the Ragged Isle uh, you know adventure how this happened because this is a really cool is that's the first time you met Sharon you mentioned to me right was through uh Ragged Isle Sure, sure. I'll, I'll I'll be brief uh cuz we could just talk about that all day um but <laughs> we uh Ra Ragged Isle started out as a uh, um a uh entry into a soap opera 
uh, contest that was being put on by a, um, a channel called SoapNet. And, oh, I uh, remember that channel. Yeah. Yeah. So some friends and and I were were talking about doing a project, and it's like, well, I don't know anything about soap operas. The only thing I know about is Dark Shadows. Um, not really connecting the two, you know. Uh, for some reason, it just it, it whatever. Same uh, here. I never never really you know, thought of Dark Shadows as a soap opera because it's right. so distinct until, you know <laughs> until you start taking it gothic. apart and recognizing the beats yeah it's a gothic yeah. soap opera yeah. um so so we use that as as like okay so we could do something like that and um ended up building this story about this mysterious island out on off the coast of maine um and uh it just started to pick up steam um and turn into an official web series at some point we didn't win the contest um because we were way off from what they wanted to do um but anyways, at some point I brought Karen and I brought some DVDs of the first season to one of the Dark Shadows conventions. Uh, yeah. conventions. yeah. And I gave them to, to each of the actors. And I just basically real quick, I just want to be like, you know, thank you for inspiring us. We live up in Maine. We built this thing. Like, I don't know if you'll ever have time to watch it, but I, I just wanted to give them something for what they gave to us, you know, and um had some interesting conversations with some different actors and Sharon actually went home and watched it. Oh. Um, yeah, I heard <laughs> I from her it. right away. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> So for the rest of the the rest of the run of the show, she was a she was a fan, and um, I love we had that. already shot the whole <laughs> thing, so there wasn't an opportunity really for her to be involved because obviously any self respecting Dark Shadows fan who was making a project and had access to any of the actors should put them in it, but it was already shot. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, Karen and I were thinking, man, if there's ever another chance to to do something, um, we should do it. Um, and uh, we got invited to do this uh, up in Maine. There's a there's a yearly invite only um, horror film series that's done called mm -hmm. Damnation Land, which is a playoff vacation land. And um, and we got invited uh, to do one. And I was like, well, this is it. So somewhere around that time, Sharon was had come up to Maine, an actor friend of ours named Kip Weeks, who is in who is in Ragged Isle and has quite a successful career of his own. He was in a movie called The Strangers, which was a, a fairly popular uh, horror film that is still getting new, uh, um, what do you call them, sequels and prequels for that movie. Um, anyway, so they both met up in Bangor too. I brought Kip over to Sharon's table and I was like, hey, this is my friend Kip. Got a picture with him together. And I was like, this is it. This is, if this is going to happen, these are the people that I need to have in my project in order to make it work. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we kind of found a, found a, um, found a story to tell. And, uh, and, and Sharon was on board. And this was for, on for road. on a country road, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which I want to, I want to get to that. Um, Sharon, 
when you were uh you were at the dark shadows festival and uh and barry handed you this ragged isle dvd uh and you you watch which i think is so great that you went home and watched uh the dvd <laughs> and got into it that's that's really cool and that the whole vibe of ragged isle is very has a dark shadows vibe to it so that this is all on youtube right Ragged. Yes. 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 Okay, good, good. Uh, so what was it about Ragged Isle that grabbed you, uh, Sharon? Ragged Isle, well, first of all, meeting Barry and uh, and Karen, we had we had talked online and meeting them in person was a thrill because they're both adorable and just they were so excited. They were so um, welcoming to me that I was welcoming to them and it was a real love fest. <laughs> and then when I, I saw the Ragged Isle, I was like, I'm handed a lot of things, scripts and whatnot along the way. And I'm not a very confrontational person and I don't like to tell somebody when it isn't any good. Um, I'm the kind of person that if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. But when I saw Ragged Isle, I got, I got like crazy fandom. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh my God, this is really good. Um, this isn't just like, you know, we did it on our basement kind of thing. I mean, this was really well done. And it had this semi-ominous feel to it where you just wanted to know what was going to happen next. And I love that. Um, I don't love when things are spoon-fed to me. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Heard it all before. Same storyline, different characters. You know, <laughs> It wasn't like that at all. Um, it was really very intriguing and very well done. And I was thrilled to support it in any way that I could. Um, yeah. I was constantly posting it on my Facebook page and telling people, yeah. if you haven't seen this, you have to see this. You know? Yeah, yeah. I remember when all that was going on and it was it was really cool. And then you did, um, when uh, On a Country Road came about your approach to do this and uh, you were you were fantastic in it as Dorothy. Well, that was, that was crazy because- <laughs> <laughs> Barry asked me to be a part of this and yeah. I was like oh no no Barry Barry your stuff is good you don't want me in it <laughs> uh, what? I was like, I'm not, I have um a, a person that I'm a personality more than an actress I don't consider myself a professional actress um but Barry was just so sweet and I thought you know what let me just truck yeah. and yeah. I was a wreck I was an absolute nervous wreck I kept saying Barry I can't do this I I can't remember lines like I used to um I, I'm way out of my my comfort zone but Barry and Karen were just so persistent and so encouraging and and Kip was very encouraging too. He kept saying, "Oh, stop it! You can yeah. do this." <laughs> you, you are great, and I I want to tell you. I'm going. We're going to talk about Dark Shadows too, of course. But I recently had John Logan on the podcast, who is an Oscar nominated screenwriter and Tony Award winning playwright. He created the Penny Dreadful series, the other Penny Dreadful mm -hmm. series, on Showtime, and we both talked about you as Sarah, your performance as Sarah which to this day still brings tears to my eyes. The two scenes in Dark Shadows that make me weep are when Sarah dies and when Sarah tells Barnabas off, the wicked are punished, so you must be good. You know, she, right. the, that right. whole scene uh, is very impactful. And well, it's funny when I watch it, and mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. I still can see the, you know, the cameramen and the sets and, and the reality of what I did, but when I watch it on TV, I get into it as well. And mm -hmm. I get filled up. And I think it's like the grandma gene in me or something just <laughs> because she's a little girl and she's yeah. so sweet. It's it's like a third person thing. It's not me. Gotcha. You know, but yes, Sarah really like chokes me up. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. A hundred percent. And such a pivotal character to the development of Barnabas. I mean, people mm. talk about who's Barnabas's true love, Josette or Angelique or Julia. The person Barnabas loves above all others is Sarah Collins, yeah, his absolutely. little sister. Yeah. I said that at a convention one time. Um, we were doing a QA and a and, and someone in the audience asked Laura and Catherine, you know, when all is said and done, who do you really think the love of his life was? And I'm a Sagittarius and I usually speak before I think anyway. And uh, and I grabbed the microphone right out of her hand and I, and I said, 
it was me. It was Sarah. <laughs> that was his one true love. And You're right. And I'm sure the audience exploded. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the audience exploded into applause too and you uh, said yes, it because absolutely it, it's true i was glad i had the opportunity to say that yes. it was so perfect absolutely and it's it's 100 percent true too um so just jumping back here to on a country road so this story on a country road it's a it was a popular tale in the suspense series that they did it on the radio i think like three or four times they did it yeah. on the radio and then they did it on tv too when they did suspense on television they used that story again for so it was a really cool uh existing story so how did you guys decide on which story to do for this short film was this always the one that you wanted to do or i think so yeah um uh our writing partner and basically our life creative partner greg tulinen who's been with us since ragged isle um and i share a love for um old time radio and um we'll we'll oftentimes just share ones you know like hey have you listened to yeah. this one have you listened to this one and we both kind of agreed that the uh the story of on a country road it's so it's it's both mostly all in one location, right? So mm. it could make it would make a great play. It would make a great, and we thought it would make a great sort of thing that we could pull off. You know, not a lot of locations involved. Almost the entirety of Sharon's part is sitting in the back seat of a yes. car <laughs> in the rain. In the rain. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we gave you vertigo that night, but that you were just it was just around and around and around. Um, yeah. So that's. I mean, we we picked it based off just sort of the 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 i mean it, it's one of the scariest old time radio uh episodes that i've ever listened to it's up there with with many of the greats and and Cary grant did it so we got we got kind of excited about oh let's uh let's let's do this one and and so that's what we landed on you know it's very few characters um super mysterious and it took place in maine uh yes. which is just just happened to be that way um so and you uh, threw in a windcliff reference which i was thrilled about <laughs> yeah yeah the, we, we we're always well, i mean we're fans above anything else if you if you watch ragged Isle, we got characters named like vicky burke which is like you know just yeah, like yep. <laughs> uh monologues at the beginning of each episode and stuff uh a lot of is it purple prose is that uh, uh, just a lot of like really like great uh, mysterious uh language sure. and um yeah it's so. fun I, I love... for the fans when they're watching it and something mm. jumps out and they go oh 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 that's uh you know yeah. an easter they call it an easter egg yeah that yeah the yes. <laughs> yeah i love i love that stuff notorious meat cleaver killer nelly goller has escaped from windcliff psychiatric hospital killing several staff there police believe she is responsible for the slaughter of a family in brunswick there is a massive manhunt underway, and the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office is urging citizens to stay indoors. Delay, cricket. Dr. Erickson, your thoughts? Take the road on the right. Well, I wouldn't technically classify Nellie Goller as a serial killer, so much as a spree killer. Similar DNA, to be sure. Now, where the two categories of killer overlap is the rush they get from ending another human being's life. The spree killer and the serial killer's brains quite literally... Will turn this off. Of rather gruesome. Their victims' very existence is snuffed out. It's, it's really yeah. fun when, when people throw that, that stuff in. I was just I was watching a short film uh, yesterday, in fact, that an fil uh, indie filmmaker did, a, a, a Bigfoot film where it's it's a short film it was interesting it was fictional you know but uh one of the the tv reporter in the film was i totally unexpectedly her name she's like hi i'm victoria winters and this is I said, Whoa, <laughs> this guy's a dark shadows fan yeah <laughs> <Cool>. man <laughs> threw in the little reference there it was really cool that's um, great so when you were uh, how was like you talked about being uh sharon being in the back seat of of the car and in the rain so sharon how did you find that entire experience of of filming that was it arduous or was it fun or what was it like it was exhausting <laughs> 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 and it was um it, it throws you off because the filming most of it was done at nighttime mm -hmm. and the the rain constantly and the repetitiveness of it and my own personal nerves, um, <laughs> you know, um, it was it was a lot. It was a lot crammed into a short period of time. Um, all of the logistics of it 
Mm -hmm. I can't imagine the pressure. I was just sitting in a car. I can't imagine the pressure that was on uh, Barry and Karen and photography, you know, just so much. And, and one of the other characters, um, she had it a whole lot worse than me because she was soaking wet most of the time. <laughs> Is she gone? Is your door locked? I will shoot you! Go away now! I'm begging you. She doesn't have a cleaver. Look! She's getting it! She's getting the cleaver! Wait a second. Wait a second. Just wait a second. <laughs> uh, you know, retakes. It wasn't a one and done. Um, yeah, I felt bad. I felt bad for her. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes, funny. Christine because, Marshall. No, I mean, it, Marshall. it was a lot. It was a lot because it was um, it was done in such a short period of time. Uh, not like big million dollar productions where they do it, you know, over the course of months. This was done in a week. Well, my my particular part was done in a weekend. Um, yeah. Obviously, there was a whole lot more before and after me. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, for me, that the, the timing of doing it during the evening was offsetting for me. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not where my vertigo came from, but <laughs> it was like I came home with jet lag from it, you know, um, yeah. but it was it was a wonderful experience. It was so much fun. Yeah. Um, even with all the nerves and, and whatever, it was it was a fun experience for sure. Yeah, you and were ultimately came out very professional looking. I mean, yes. there's no doubt about that, you know, so Barry works his magic. Yeah, you He's were got a heck of a team behind him, too. I mean, yeah, these yeah, people have team. great relationships with each other. They're they're friends above all else. And the work just comes out of out of love, out of love for the art. Yeah. And that comes through for sure. Yeah, uh, it does. Uh, it absolutely yeah. does. Yeah. Your character, uh, though, in the in this, you're you're such a sweet person in real life um and you're known for playing a very sweet character so your character in this was a total yeah barry barry different. basically told me to be a bitch <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you were not a very nice person in, in that film that character was not but that's the whole the whole point of the character but you did it so well she okay i don't know get us out of here we have to leave yeah well you know what you said you were gonna fix it. That mad woman is right outside this car. I can't. The battery's dead. The guy, the cab driver, and kind of yelling at him, and then this lady trying to get into the car, and then ultimately what happens in the I don't I don't want to spoil it if people want to watch it. Uh, sure. I will put a link in the show notes, or we can talk about that. But I will put I, here's the I'll put a spoiler warning at before we t if we spoil anything. There's yeah. yeah. I'll put a spoiler warning at the top of the show. Let's spoil just, it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's talk just about say there were some special effects in there. Yeah. yeah. Talk, well, talk about that. How is that? How? So, okay. Spoilers before we get, you don't want to hear of how it ends. I, it was I, nine years now. ago. Go watch it and it's, come it's back. It's up to Barry. It's, it's up, up to Barry. To Barry, Barry it's up to you. Yes. Oh, it's, it was nine this. years ago. If you haven't seen it by now, then I, I don't know what to tell you. It's Barry, free I'll on YouTube. You, people still yell at me for spoiling Dark Shadows Really? Lines from 55 Come years. <laughs> That's why I put a spoiler warning at the top of every show. There's always oh, a spoiler. Oh, wow. Warning. So uh. talk about, but if you go for it, I'm curious about how, how that was accomplished. The highlight for me at, during this production was um, the drama of blood and guts. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I'm not into that kind of stuff. Me neither. I don't, me neither. Yeah. I don't watch those kind of movies and and it's certainly not associated with Sharon Lentz or her character of Sarah Collins you know a little sweet girl who people still treat me like I'm 10 years old sometimes <laughs> um <laughs> and they're shocked and appalled when I involve myself in something else but um <laughs> having special effects and blood pumps and pretend glass <laughs> and things like that was was like 
every child's dream come true. You know? <laughs> Yeah, I was like, this is so cool. I want to stab somebody. <laughs> I, it kind of lets out an inner demon, you know, that you can, that you're allowed to do this. You can be aggressive and you can be like bad and wrong, you know, but yeah, that was, that was kind of cool. <laughs> that was part of the selling point for us with, uh, with our Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign. It was like, you know, see Sharon in a way that you'd never seen never her seen. before, <laughs> you know? And, and uh, yeah, I, I remember, I remember two things just from you talking about it. I remember um, specifically, and we won't name names, but w there was a specific person she was channeling uh, when she was <laughs> I playing. Didn't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> When she was playing her character. And oh, we'll, okay. We'll, we'll let that always be a mystery. Uh, if, if you watch it, you know, I'd love to know what you think. Uh, He's a great um, director. He just said one thing to me and, <laughs> and got it out of me. <laughs> um, yeah, and the, and the special effects. I mean, we, we had a, a guy by the name of Eric Anderson, who is, in Maine is one of the special effects guys. And uh, we had made friends on Ragged Isle. Um, and he came and he did stuff that I didn't even know how we were going to do it. We just wrote it and, and sort of hope we'd figure it out. We used uh, Karen's Toyota Matrix as the as the taxi. Okay. Um, so there's a there's a scene where the window smashes and that's he made a glass. Uh, it's not sugar glass, but it was some other kind of sort of sticky glass that sits there and the rain's pouring on it. The rain is just like people, friends standing outside with uh, hoses um, <laughs> all night long. Oh, and wow. uh, yeah, a lot of water. Um, <laughs> but smash through there. And to the day that Karen sold that matrix, there were pieces of little sticky <laughs> broken glass all over it. <laughs> I um, still have my my little piece of jagged glass that I have oh, held up. I still have it. Oh, oh that's so cool. You still have your murder weapon. <laughs> that's so great. Yeah, I she was it. so excited, man. She was so <laughs> excited to kill someone. Um, yeah, so we had gruesome. The, it's super gruesome. You get the water or the blood sort of squirting out of her eye. At some point, it squirts out and just goes directly into her mouth. Uh. <laughs> I mean, I like horror movies, but I just found that really super disgusting. I see you looking at each other. Well, why shouldn't I have this piece of glass? You think I'm going to sit here defenseless? Look, put the glass down. Why? So you can use it against me? You think I'm crazy? Right. That's enough. What are you doing? God, God. stay away from me. <laughs> so when this was released, you also screened it at the Dark Shadows Festival, correct? Oh mm -hmm. my God. Yeah. What a dream come true. Not, mm -hmm. I mean, the one dream is like, I'm working. I am. I'm like, what? One degree now of dark shadows is that how it works <laughs> because I, I i've worked so. with someone in dark shadows or yeah. two degrees whatever it is <laughs> so you know oh my god uh I, i'm done for the rest of my life and then somehow we got to show it at the 50th anniversary at the 50th yeah yeah so we got to show it in front of fans you know we were like a part of something that we had we're up in maine man there's really there's no way in on a lot of stuff, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. uh, if you live in LA, if you live in New York, sometimes you can kind of like, I don't know, you just know the right people. Right. But uh, yeah, we got, we got to show a film there and that was just like a second it dream was, come true. It was an integral part of the dark shadows 50th program. I mean, for sure. Yeah. People loved it. Yeah. It had, it had, it had all the right things. It, it not patting myself on the back, but it had a, a cast member from dark shadows in it. It had a fan, a, a true fan of Dark Shadows create it. So therefore there were things in it that they, you know, could pick up on, whatnot. But yeah, it was it was a full circle moment for sure. Yeah. And a lot of people saw it and a lot of people in I mean, I didn't hear anybody say anything bad about it. It was, you know, well received for sure. It that's, was very exciting. Yeah. That's great. Oh, very cool. And it's it can be watched 
for free on YouTube. Uh, if I, I will definitely put a link to it in the show notes so that you can check it out and to Ragged Isle as well. Because uh, if you haven't seen it, I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, and it's and great. kudos to the Department of Photography too, because they did some really awesome shots. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. To, to shoot in mostly darkness uh, mm -hmm. with rain, it stuck crammed inside a car like where where's the camera guy like he's somewhere in there like sitting yeah. on top of somebody's lap uh how did they do how did you do there that? was it audio was... in the trunk there was somebody yeah. it wasn't no you kidding. it was greg really? it was our writer greg, greg. was in wow. the trunk just in sitting the, back in there. the trunk <laughs> yeah wow yeah it looked very cool like very atmospheric in the dark with the with the lights was it summertime when you shot it i hope mm, yeah okay because yeah, so. with all the rain it would have been oh well it would have been fall it would have been fall. fall oh, okay. Guess. It's still pretty it cold little... up in Maine and Portland uh, area. In, oh, dude. In yeah. Fall. Totally. Yeah. I'm not too far from you. I'm a couple hours away from where you are, but it's sure, still colder sure. up there than it is down here. Um, yeah. What about um, upcoming uh, uh, films? Are you still, I mean, I, you know, Ansel does, has does a lot, Ansel Farage, who I've just had on the podcast recently, does a lot of films with the Dark Shadows actors on the West Coast. Mm. But yeah. you're on the East Coast, you know, we have <laughs> Sharon, we have Marie Wallace, we have Donna Wandry down here. We have several Dark Shadows cast members that are still uh, here on the East Coast. So I, I'd love to see some more Barry oh, and Karen wow. Dodd productions with the Dark Shadows cast. Well, we should <laughs> talk then. Let's talk. Let's talk after here. I, I, I would also love to involve you. I know you're yeah. a great actor as well. Oh, so. gosh, no, nobody wants this. Then, then nobody will watch it. Oh, what do you <laughs> You got your people. You got your people. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Karen's Absolutely. got her people. Like we've all got yeah. we've all got our weird people who are <laughs> excited about what we're working on. Um, I will tell they're you, like, weird. I would they're be eclectic. Honored. They're eclectic. I would be honored to be in one of your films if you ever right. you do another one. I would love to do it. Absolutely. Well, let's Not figure too far it out. away. I mean, we could, and I know Tristan and Michelle too up there. I'd love to to yeah. come up and visit you guys. Yeah. Let's figure it out. P putting on a film. <laughs> is very um emotionally uh draining uh mm -hmm. for for some people people like me uh people like karen like we put a lot into it and it takes a lot out of us um so uh it's not something that we're just like wishing oh we gotta do it again you know we feel like we nailed a couple yeah and um so it would have to be just the right idea like right now we're doing this like you said our, our comic book yes which is for, for karen and i it's pretty low stakes you know we we created the characters stakes and the story, uh -huh. but, sorry uh, oh <laughs> um, sorry uh, i couldn't resist i am a horror hostess you know so i <laughs> <laughs> yes yes uh uh but uh you know someone else draws it our, our artist Alyssa avery who is so talented she draws it um i've been thinking about doing a uh an um uh an audio drama uh next um i think that might be a fun oh that's a great idea that's really right cool. that's yeah. a, look at the beautiful artwork in there beautiful. she's 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 awesome she's very disney like style um which which i think very spooky yeah cool. kind of complements the the story it's from a kid's perspective kind of thing um yeah, no, I would love to do that, and I maybe the maybe this podcast isn't the best place to to brainstorm, but we should definitely talk. I think if if anything, like, I, God, I'm talking too much. This really should be no. Sharon. No, <laughs> we love you, Barry. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I love you too, Sharon. Yeah. Those I audio, just, dram yeah, audio yeah. dramas are great, you know, and would, you mentioned the classic yeah. radio shows and being a fan of those. I am too, because, and they don't get enough credit. Um, I hosted mm -hmm. a bunch of the, the classic radio shows. I mean, they have such great uh, mm. stories and actors like, you know, Peter Lorre and Boris Karloff and all these yeah. great actors of, of the time in these radio shows. Uh, yeah. And they often don't get it, uh, as much attention as they should. So I think doing a, an audio um, yeah. drama series would be a really cool idea. And and it might be a way to do it remotely, you know, have people from <laughs> right. from around. Um, I think I think if if anybody who um, kind of lives in a in a remote place and is uh, a fan and is creative, I think probably th I would like to just say to to those people that like there are ways to do stuff you don't have to live in you know California you don't have to live in New York City there's there's ways to make it work and and uh you just gotta you gotta really believe in what you're doing and spend a little time really learning 
the process of what it is you're trying to do. If you can't go to film school, listen to listen to audio commentaries, you know, uh, there's so much behind the scenes stuff on YouTube. Now it's, it's a totally different world from when I was learning, but you can learn most anything online now. Um, I know this isn't about that, but I just, it just occurred to me. That's like how rare it is for somebody outside of the system to be able to, um, weasel their way into a world that they really care about and want to see shown in the best light possible. Right. And with the, uh, internet, you know, it's uh, yeah. uh, you. Ha- there are so many outlets for uh, filmmakers and other creators to release their work. Um, yeah. I'm going. You know, I'm going to be devil's advocate here, though, for a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree with what Barry said because you know, obviously, things are. You can do a whole lot more online than ever mm-hmm. before, but some people now. How do I say this nicely? Um, don't think that just because you have a video camera that you can produce a quality Agreed. product Agreed. like yes. Barry has. Because yes. like Barry said, there's a whole lot more that goes into it than just gathering a room full of people and telling them what to say. And I mean, independent film is wonderful. And I've been involved in, in a few projects and you know the, 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 the product of those projects really shows what went into it. Yeah. You know, and and I've also seen some people who grab a video camera and hang up a, a crinkly sheet and mm-hmm. do something and don't understand why it's not well received. Right. Um, what Barry does and other independent filmmakers like Barry do are they're special They're They are special and they put a lot of love into it. And it's a lot of work. And um, and I'm always thrilled to be any part of it, whether it's it's you know, putting, picking up trash or, <laughs> or being in front of the camera, I, either side. I, I love the, the, the camaraderie of it, the, mm-hmm. the, the thrill of the, and the excitement of these creative people. Yeah. Um, I'm not particularly creative that way, but I want to be involved. So, you know, well, you're so, creative as a performer for sure. I mean, well, I, I, you know, I have, I have my talents. Yeah. Um, right <laughs> now, my talent is caregiving. Yes. But, you know. yeah. Have you, uh, I mean, you've, I know you've been very busy with, you know, with that, but uh, I, I hope to see you getting back to, you. I know you were doing theater for a little while too, uh, as mm-hmm. well. Yes, uh, I was, but, you know, that takes a lot of time. Yeah. And when I do something, I'm committed to it 110%. And if I can't, I have to be honest and say, I can't right now. Yeah. And right now, you know, family and, and health is, is paramount. Um, I have done a few conventions mm-hmm. um, outside of the Dark Shadows conventions, you know, comic book, nostalgia, that kind of thing. Um, and they're fun. You know, I didn't do them for a couple of years because of COVID. I, I could not risk um, my husband being sure. um, you know, compromised, I could not risk getting sick and bringing it home. So I was pretty hardcore about not doing anything. Um, now I'm a little bit more amenable to it. And I've, I've done a couple mm-hmm. and, you know, with precaution, I don't put plastic up between me and people. I'm still a hugger. <laughs> um, you know? I don't take pictures with a mask on, but um, I actually have one coming up if anyone is in in or near Whiting, New Jersey, I'm doing a small convention. Uh, it's called Village Con, Great. and it'll be advertised on my Facebook page for sure. Um, I, I still, you know, as long as there are fans slash people out there who are interested in meeting me or hearing my experience, I will continue to do that. Um, I never, and I've said this to Barry before, I never want to be that lady sitting in the corner where everybody goes, who's that old lady who thinks she's somebody like, (laughs) I don't want to be that person. But at the same time, I've had other professional people say to me, okay, Sharon, um, Sarah Collins was iconic. And I go, what do you mean? And they go, no one else can say that they were Sarah Collins in the original Dark Shadows. Yeah. And I need to hold on to that. You know, to, it's true. To I, like I told you, I mean, I was I was a guest at Coast City Comic Con and I was like a kid when I saw that you were going to be a guest there. I was so excited 
to to meet you. Uh, I get excited. I love people. <laughs> I, I love hugging people and and talking about you know what makes them happy. Yeah, and I would love to see you. I remember at the time we talked about a little bit about some of the other cons. Uh, I'll put a link to Village Con too in the show notes. But there's one in um, Pittsburgh called Monster Bash that I I I would love to see you there too. I've done that one a bunch of times. I haven't done it lately. I might go to the Halloween one they're going to do in November. But I think that would be a really good one too. Monster Bash. Have you been to Monster Bash, Barry? I have not. Yeah. And, and Sharon, no, you have neither one of you. Yeah, that one's it's that I think. I mean, they've. I, he has the guy that runs it, Ron Adams. You're a good guy. He hasn't done a Dark Shadows theme yet, but I I would like to see him do that. And I know at one point it was discussed uh, with with doing that, but I don't I don't know if uh, if he's going to. But it would be great to do. You should that. run it. I'll man. put a bug you, in his ear. Yeah, yeah I will. You, I will. If yeah. I, yeah, if I go out there again, I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna have a chat with him about that because uh, it's in it's in Pittsburgh. It's a it's a cool con. Um, let's talk a little bit about. Well, first of all, before we, I do want to talk a little bit more about Dark Shadows here, but I want to ask, is Night, is the Night is Falling graphic novel available anywhere or was it through mm -hmm. only through <laughs> the, the Indiegogo? Yeah, it was, it was, it was available through the kicks. We did a Kickstarter, Kickstarter right, right. for this one. Uh, it, was, it was very successful, uh, super successful. Um, and uh, yeah, so we sold a bunch of books that way and um we didn't do it we, we wanted to see i mean budget for these kind of things some people are really smart about ordering extras you know <laughs> you know but the way we did it was very much like in order to get the book you got to be a part of this thing um mm -hmm. there are plans to do that but um you can also read the story for free online um at uh if you go to our website um nightisfalling.com there are links to a place called webtoon and um so it's it's formatted to be read on say a tablet or a um oh great or a computer and okay. we've actually gone beyond the story in the comic book right now so we're we're in un uncharted territory oh, okay for cool. the story um it'll be the the first way that you can kind of read the the extended part of it we will do another kickstarter when we've done enough to have make another book out of it and then we'll right. sell the first one again through there too so you could get both of them oh great we'll okay. more copies. we're just not business people you know we're just <laughs> we're just we want to do a thing and then kind of like get yeah. back to our lives for a while we don't have like a shop or want to like sure. keep putting comics and books in boxes and sending them out all the time uh plus maybe that helps make it uh more collectible i don't know um, uh, it's really great. Uh, and fan, people who you. listen to this podcast, I think will really enjoy it. It's a vampire story, but it also has, uh, kids and like teenagers that are dealing with this, you know, yeah. uh, supernatural force that has invaded their small town. Uh, and, uh, and it, it's really, it's a cool, really cool comic, uh, a cool story. And, uh, I, uh, I'll definitely, again, I will link to that in the show notes. Thank you. Oh, Thanks absolutely. Thanks for promoting it. You promoted our Kickstarter, which was very sweet. Oh, my um, pleasure. Jeez. And, uh, yeah, it's it's like all of the stories that Karen, Karen and I have done. It takes place in Maine. Uh, we write what we know to an extent. Um, and uh, yeah, it takes place in the summer of 1977. So this is the first time we've actually written a story that um, kind of lives in the real world. It dances alongside <laughs> some events that happen that summer, including mm -hmm. the... Uh, the unfortunate death of Elvis Presley. Yes, yes. Um, I remember when that happened too. When so Elvis that died, is, yeah. Very so cool. So there's a, there's a, it's a vampires and Elvis sort of a connection <laughs> yeah. going on in the story that yeah. takes place in Maine in 1977. So if you were around at that time, I was two, so I don't remember <laughs> much uh, from the time, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's sort of a, and, and definitely I, I feel like it's youth, oriented it's not too scary or gross you know or uh, you know definitely if you have children um who are interested in horror it might be a nice gateway uh, yeah. to get into the genre it's really cool uh but you mentioned you were you were two at the time so i want to ask you uh and i want to talk to sharon too about this uh some some dark shadows memories here though so how did you first discover dark shadows uh barry mom my mom your mom yeah yeah she uh she was one of those kids right 
that ran home. So I guess I'm second generation. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, when it was on sci-fi, she, she used to have it on. And one day I was watching and it, I, I was interested in filmmaking even as uh, a kid. And, uh, I remember watching just one day she had it on and the camera just started like going away from the actors. And I, I don't know where it was going. It just, <laughs> it, it, like it, it, and I was like, Oh my God, what are we watching? Like, this is like incredible. Um, and, you know, we talked about, you know, what it was and how it was sort of a, a, a sort of a live show back in the day, you know, live to tape. And, uh, uh, so I was in instantly kind of interested just from a filmmaker perspective, you know, once you see that stuff, once you break that wall, it creates a certain uh, theater like vibe to what you're watching yeah. that uh, that I hadn't seen before in other TV. And I haven't really seen much since um, since then. Uh, and so, yeah, that's that's how I got into it. Started getting the DVDs and yeah, you're about by, night by the home. way. By the way, Barry's mom is very sweet and not necessarily <laughs> the kind of person that you would think would be like a horror fan. Yeah, that was she my loves impression anyway. <laughs> yeah, every every Halloween, she's like, "What are you watching tonight?" I'm like, "I'm watching, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street." She's like, "Oh, I'm watching Halloween again." You know? Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, she's a big horror fan. Great. Yeah. Uh, and for the video, uh, people who are listening to the audio version on the video version of this, you can see Barry's backdrop is his really cool Dark Shadows <laughs> collection in the background there uh, with the bobbleheads and everything. And and your wife, Karen, who is your high school sweetheart, she she's also a, a fan, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, we, it wouldn't have worked <laughs> out otherwise. Um, yeah, we definitely both love uh, Dark Shadows. We have an affinity for the uh the pre barnabas episodes mm -hmm. um b based s solely on the gothic uh atmosphere you know yeah. something about something about those early episodes um really hit something in my brain you know a lot of the mm -hmm. the filming outside the yes yeah. of uh, you know any of that stuff yeah any of the like when it was actually shot on film uh exterior stuff really just just sets such a beautiful mood. In fact, I, I, I'm more likely to want to turn the color off even on the color episodes. Mm. Um, some people do that. Yeah. Something about something about it, man. It just, it really, uh, it works for me, but yeah. I love the whole thing. I love, I, I love, I love Sharon's part. I love, I love all of it, man. I got, yeah. I got the, uh, you know, we've all got one of these at this point, but I get, I get one Oh, of there these. it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, wonderful. Sh Sharon, I want, I want to ask you, I, I know you were a child at, at the time, but I, uh, I've heard you talk about some of your memories of, of working on Dark Shadows. I, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions about that, if that's okay. Sure. Um, we recently lost Lara Parker, sadly. Uh, she was, uh, I had the honor of having her on my podcast. I think it was her last interview that she ever did was on, on this podcast. And uh, she was really great to talk to um do you have any memories of, of lara that come to mind the uh, the strongest memory i have of her was that she was so beautiful and she would whenever i saw her i was i she was older than me obviously i mean most everybody on the show was twice my age um so we didn't hang out or yeah you know socialize together so when she would come into um you know the rehearsal room or or come on set she was always so beautiful and as a little girl like you know you're kind of drawn to that that disney princess yeah thing and she had that she you know the the beautiful blonde hair and the big eyes and um she was kind of demure mm -hmm. which angelique wasn't always demure so right. i think she probably had a lot of fun coming out of herself for for that character um, but, you know, my impression always was she was she was calm and sweet and demure and and just so pretty, you know. But again, it's not like we ever had any great conversations or anything like that, unfortunately. But uh, later, yeah. after the show was over and we would go to conventions together, obviously, yeah. um, I kind of came up a little bit in in you know where the age thing wasn't as drastically different mm -hmm. and uh, we had dinner together a couple of times and and she still was very um reserved 
Mm -hmm. um, fun, you know, funny could be very funny, but also very reserved and kind of quiet. Yeah. Um, really smart, really smart. Um, listening to her conversations. I usually was pretty quiet in these conversations because, you know, they're the stars. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> That's the way I've always felt. I was even, even when I, you know, 40 years old, 45, 50 years old, I still at these conventions when we were on Q and A's and whatnot, I still took the stance of being the little girl. I, it, it's, it's a very weird concept, I think, but um, I know what you're saying. You you kind of went into that mindset of I was were around all I'm these treated people that way. I act yeah. that way um, every <laughs> once in a while. Like you know, if, if if you hand me a microphone and you give me an audience, I don't shut up. Um, but most of the time, I will I will you know demure to everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> How about uh uh. I mentioned the scenes with Jonathan Fred with Barnabas and how pivotal they were in, in the show to his character and the trajectory of his character, the scenes he had with Sarah. And um, did you work with Jonathan on those scenes? Uh, like, did he take you aside and you both talked about it? Do you have any memories of that? Or uh, Yes and no. Mm -hmm. It wasn't uh, like a big set aside time to talk about it or anything like that but but during the read-throughs at the table you know for with a script and and during the rehearsals there were times when he would kind of lean into me and you know I would be I would be a little bit nervous you know that I wasn't going to get it right whatever and he was he was very kind to me and he would lean into me and say relax you're yeah. fine even if you mess up it's fine at the end of the day you know what you're doing. You, you're a professional, you know? So he was without being real wordy. Um, he was very comforting always yeah. to me, you know, um, he was bigger than life and he was more than my big brother. He was more like a fatherly figure in real life. Yeah. Um, so he would come across that way and he would just be very calming and, and put his big hand on yeah. me, you know, and say, it's fine. You got this. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I, that's how I got through some of those scenes because he was like that. And I have to tell you the one scene in the mausoleum, um, when, when Sarah does see him in, oh, a, right. in, in yeah. a bad light with the blood on his face and all that, I have to tell you the story behind that, because when we rehearsed that scene, you know, it was just like going through the lines, like always. And I knew that I was upset and whatnot, but when, they actually filmed it, or I should say first, he never had that blood on his face when we were practicing, mm -hmm. when we were rehearsing. So when I turn around, or I should say when he turns around and looks at me, it's literally the first time Sharon Smith sees him with blood on his face. So the reaction that you see, the reaction that they got, which was pre-planned by the director for sure, um, was very genuine. There was no acting involved. It was like, you know, <laughs> yeah. damn. <laughs> Which I always think that was that was so great that they planned that that way because they genuinely got a, a, a true reaction. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, I was. Because of being 10 years old, because of being behind the scenes and, and having seen these people, you know, sitting around smoking cigarettes, drinking coffee and eating donuts. Um, I didn't have that, that tension of being scared of anybody. They yeah. were just people. Right. And I was just playing, you know, yeah. it was little kid acting, you know? Right, right. Um, so he was genuine with me, you know, yeah. just calm. I wasn't scared of him. He wasn't overpowering to me. He never admonished me. Or, you know, oh, great, she screwed that up. You know, it, it, he never did anything like, nobody did. Right. Nobody did. Even when I did mess up, I think it was it was uh, well known that all the characters at some point or another had their moment to flub a line, walk into something. You know, I mean, this was, as Barry said, live to take. Things yeah. happen. It's like a play. And you just keep moving. You know, mm -hmm. we all know that, 
that wasn't supposed to happen, but you know, we're not stopping. So it is live theater. Going. It's very similar to live theater, and everybody says Absolutely. that. It's like summer stock, it's just like you're churning out these shows, and it's live to tape. Absolutely. And, and there were all theater actors, too. A lot of them on the show were theater actors. Um, but you, there was also another kid actor on the show, of course, the resident troublemaker, uh, David Hennessy, who was also brilliant. Um and uh, I had heard, I, I you know, I always heard the story that David Hennessy and um, Denise Nickerson, who came onto the show later, used to go bum cigarettes out of Joan Bennett's dressing room. And somebody told me that you did that, too. I said, I don't think Sharon no. did that, did you? Yeah, I didn't think so. No. <laughs> you know, first of all, uh, Denise was on after. Yes. So they were a little bit older. Yeah. Um, I was... I don't want to say an immature 10 years old by today's standards. Yes. But maybe not immature, but, but naive. Um, and he was a year older than me, but he was way more mature than me. He was a New Yorker kid and he had been on dark shadows and he had confidence that I didn't have. Um, and deservedly so. I mean, he was good at what he did. He, I always say this, he knew all of his lines and everyone else's too. <laughs> um, you know? So, I mean, the adults would defer to him. <laughs> what was he supposed to, or what were they supposed to say? Um, and, but yeah, you know, he was kind of what my mother used to call Peck's bad boy. He, he could, you know, um, not a troublemaker so much as like, he just wanted to have fun. And sometimes that meant like breaking the rules a little bit. Oh, you you prank. He used to play pranks on this on the set, right? But we we didn't smoke together. Um, my mom was very protective of me, and when I wasn't on set or in rehearsal, I was in my dressing room yeah. um, doing schoolwork or coloring mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. I wasn't free to get yeah. into much trouble. Right. So, right. yeah. But oh, you know, David, like I said, David was more mature than me. And yeah. uh, and had been on the show for a year before me. Yeah. Um, so he had the lay of the land and he basically came and went as he pleased, you know, within the studio. So, yeah. Well, I remember you told a story where he put you, you went in the coffin and he sat on the lid and wouldn't let you out or so that to play. A, yeah. A oh, joke let's on play you. hide and seek. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gullible Sharon. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was great to see you both in the. Um, they did the Dark Shadows Halloween uh, reunion online that uh, yes. you all did a couple of years ago, and uh, it was cool to see David come back into the fold because he's you know he's a successful restaurateur in, in Panama and he's been doing that for years. But it was cool through the magic of of Zoom to to have him back and the two of you together in in one you know reunion was really Absolutely. great. Absolutely, and that yeah. was the first time I'd seen him you know, actually seeing him and not just a, a photograph uh, in years. Yeah. And yeah, it was really, it was really sweet. Yeah. And his, one of his children was there and she was about 10 years old and uh -huh. it was cute to have that little interaction with her. Yes. Yeah. I hope to see more of those down, down the road. Uh, it would be great to, you know, to have more reunions like that. Uh, it was really fun. And talk about a little bit about Dan Curtis too, because he, Dan Curtis seemed also like a very larger than life person, but also a bit intimidating, I'm sure, too. So what was what was it like with, with Dan Curtis? Did you have any interaction with him at all? Or Very little, mm -hmm. actually, very little. I mean, I was in his company when he was expressing his ideas and maybe correcting or changing some things. Mm -hmm. And you're right, he was bigger than life and he was intimidating. But at the same time, when he wasn't being intense with the work, he was very jovial. You know, hell yeah. fellow well met um, when that pressure wasn't on. Yeah. Um, which I, I'm sure you know yourself within yourself that you can be light as day. And then when you've got a project that you're intense on, you get a little bit like, not now. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but as far as interacting with me personally, not really. I, I met him when I did the inter, or the audition for Dark Shadows, not the first one, but the second one audition. Um, he was there. And I don't remember him saying anything to me necessarily, mm -hmm. just observing me. Yeah. And, uh, and then during the run of the show, I knew when he was in the sound booth because 
when he wasn't happy, you could hear him on set. <laughs> <laughs> he was rather booming at times. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I only knew who that was because of the actors around me. Yeah. You know, rolling their eyes and going, oops. <laughs> <You know? Right. laughs> he wasn't happy about something. Yeah. But uh, but again, as a creative person, which he was very much so, um, he was intense with his project. And it's right. completely understandable to me as an adult because he loved what he did. He wanted a good product. Yeah. And in order to do that, you know, and communicate what his 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 need was for that project. Um, sometimes yeah. he was intense. Yeah. But you know, as a person, he he was he was a nice guy, no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and obviously, know, all the people that he worked with, um, you know, on the set, I've never heard any of the other actors say anything derogatory. Yeah. Um, just that you know, there yeah. were times when he was intense, and uh, you know. Do what you're here to do. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and there was a whole team working there, like Leela Swift and, and Henry Kaplan, all the, the directors mm -hmm. of Great the show. writers, yeah, for Great sure. Great writers, yeah. Um, you had a lot of scenes too with uh Catherine Lee Scott in the cell, mm -hmm. uh, when she which was really those were terrible. I remember watching those as a kid and being scared. I mean, it was Barnabas had Maggie locked up and Here's this little girl ghost playing outside and talking. Then they became friends. Comes out it was of very, nowhere. Yeah, it was very touching, though. It was a, a, a very, she was trying to help her uh, get out of that. She became friends with with this little ghost girl. Um, so did you, do you have any memories of working with Catherine in those scenes at all? Um, yeah, we, we got along fine that way. I mean, again, we didn't socialize outside of the right. studio. Uh, the only time I, I really saw her and, and interacted with her was during rehearsals and dress rehearsals and, and the ac actual uh, filming. Mm -hmm. But um, she was always a professional, good at what she did. You know, again, I always, as a little girl, it was like she was so pretty. But I don't have a lot of memories about that interaction just you know the the sure. script the storyline uh, and in later years obviously uh at conventions and whatnot you always get the feeling of like familiarity sure. uh, familiar yeah um, when we're together we may not see each other for a whole year but when we're all put up there on stage or we're hanging out uh, and eating a meal there's just, there's a sense of family and just like going to thanksgiving once every you know year yeah. There are people that you are drawn to and there are people that not so much. And, yeah. you know, that's the way I feel about the the other actors. Yeah. It's a familiar, uh, you do get that familial kind of vibe uh, from the convention, just seeing the interactions between all of you and everything. And it just, it does have that feel to it. Um, and we're also very, very different. Sure. I mean, I'm completely an East Coaster. Yeah. And a lot of the cast are West Coasters yeah, and yep. there's a difference. You know? <laughs> there's a difference in the mentality and the way you do things and the, in the life you live. Sure. I mean, I have not necessarily stayed in the business and I'm very family oriented yeah. and, you know, that shows. Yeah. Um, Grayson Hall, I heard, was very. She's she's she was a mom to her son Matthew, mm -hmm. was about uh, about the same age as, as uh, David Hennessy, I think. I think he's a, maybe a little older than you are. And uh, was Grayson uh, mom like towards you at all, or was she? No, mom, no, no, no. She was <laughs> never mom like when she was on set or mm -hmm. in the studio. She was a hundred percent New Yorker. That's my, <laughs> that's my recollection. hundred percent New Yorker. She was a little bit brash at times. She was a smoker. Um, she was confident, just the kind of person that would come in with their pedal pushers on and flop themselves in a seat, light up a cigarette and bring out the paper, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. It's funny, very funny, <laughs> yeah. very smart, very personable. But uh, never motherly to me. No, okay. no, not mother. I was from the other actors on Dark Shadows. Believe it or not, I was very much treated as. I wanted to use the word peer. 
obviously I was quite a bit younger, but peer in the sense that you're an actress, you're here to do a job. Um, we expect you to be on point, you mm-hmm. know, show up when you're supposed to say what you're supposed to say. And, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, so in that, I was appreciative of that, that I was talked to like an adult for the most part. Nobody babied me. Nobody talked down to me. Nobody treated me like a piece of furniture. You know, you've oftentimes heard the joke that, oh God, if there's a, a child or an animal on set, like they're going to be tortured by it. You know, it, I never got that feeling at all. Now, maybe I was oblivious. I don't know. <laughs> they tra- they were treating maybe you like they a were pro- talking bad about me behind my back. I don't know. <laughs> they were treating you like a pro. I've heard, I heard that about David Hennessy too, that every, everybody just treated him as a peer as well. I mean, just, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. I mean, uh, you didn't get any special anything. Yeah. You know, we didn't, it wasn't like, oh, it's okay. She messed up. We can do it three more times till she gets it right. Mm -mm. Yeah. You're here just like all the adults and we're not stopping. So yeah, know your lines. (laughs) (laughs) Was, Was there ever any talk of, so there's the line that Sarah says to Barnabas is, uh, uh, I will go away and never come back. Never. That will be your punishment. I know there's good and there's evil because I learned it from you, but you've forgotten it, Barnabas. And now you have to learn it all over again. I'll never come back until you do. And Sarah never came back. So I guess Barnabas never learned. I, <laughs> maybe, maybe he did at the very end. Uh, the I very always end. Want, thought that would be a great bookend to the series mm-hmm. is that Sarah does at the end reappear to Barnabas mm-hmm. finally. And he's redeemed himself to some degree and that never happened was there ever i know you were it was a few years later so you were older at that point so it would have been difficult to explain why a ghost has exactly. gotten a little older but exactly. was there ever any talk that you're aware of of bringing you back not not to me no and i've mm-hmm. been asked a million times how come everybody else was multiple characters and you were not multiple characters <laughs> and i always deflect to that same answer that you just you know uh, alluded to Ghosts don't grow up. Ghosts don't, you know, got a little thinner in the face, got a little taller, um, too hard to explain. And and then people will say, well, you could have been a different character. I didn't have that option. But to be honest with you, in hindsight, I don't want to be another character. I want to be Sarah. I yeah. want to always be Sarah. You know? Yeah, yeah. it's special. <laughs> but it I, really is. I, have to, yeah. I have to say that particular scene with Jonathan I have visceral memories of him being at my height as he was crouched down on his knee or whatnot and intensely being face to face with him. Um, So much so that like I was observing the makeup on his face, the eyeliner on his eyes, the, the product in his hair. Like, I mean, yeah. That I remember I remember that like he's right there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was kind of an intimidating feeling. Um just to have this big man on his knees right in front of me, you know, and I'm supposed to be admonishing him. Like that was a lot to ask. <laughs> it was great. It was but, sensational. You know, knowing yeah. that it's it's pretend and that's yeah. the deal. I did it, but I, I, I can remember that so, so clearly. And yeah. I don't have a lot of clear memories. I mean, <laughs> I ain't young anymore. You, know? <laughs> you are. But oh. that one, that one is permanent. It's yeah. indelible. Yeah. It's, uh, well, it was such an, I mean, it built up the, the, the storyline up to that point built up to that moment. It was such a key thing in the show. Mm-hmm. And I, I've, I have visceral memories of seeing that for the first time when I watched that as a kid. And just being absolutely transfixed by that. And then also I got emotional watching that too, because Barnabas breaks down. I mean, you're, you, you did bring Barnabas to his knees. Sarah bring is the one who was able to do that and through your performance. uh, So it was excellent. Um, I do think it's a shame that when they came back from the seance, Sarah's name was never mentioned again. They did one time. They did. Yes. One time? Later. Yes. Later they did. I stand correct. I love it. No, <laughs> I love that they did though. Uh, it was years later. It was uh, uh, in uh, 1970 during the 1840 storyline. Angelique is, Barnabas and Angelique are having a, a scene, a confrontation. And she says, Angelique says, you had a little sister, as I recall. 
what was her name? Ah, yes, Sarah. And, and Barnabas says she died because of you. It was something to that effect. Mm -hmm. They referenced that late, way later in the oh, series. Well, that's nice to hear. That's, I was I very that. happy that's they nice did that. Hear. Yeah. Yes, they did. Yeah. Um, I, I was glad. I would have. I would have. I would have been disappointed if they didn't, because she was such an important character, and then she's she's gone. But I'm glad they did. They definitely did reference Sarah, but it was years later. Um, and I'm glad they remembered too. That was great that they yeah, put that in the you. script. <laughs> yeah. Um. L last question: Are you sick of London bridges falling down? <laughs> <laughs> or, um... or does it hold a special place for you are you sick of it or does it hold a special place for you it holds a special place for me I, I every time i hear at any time i ever hear that song anywhere of course i think of of sarah it, it holds a special place for me in that i can jokingly say you know like in jaws you know she's the you know he's coming because of the music well, you know, Sarah's coming because of the music, you know, so, so for that, that reference, I can enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but I cannot tell you how many times fans have asked me to please sing London Bridge and I cringe I at the ask. idea I, of it. I won't ask um, you. I was not planning to. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, yeah. it's part of the, yeah. the whole shtick, you know, but, um, I did at one convention, actually two conventions, but one of the conventions, I was on stage. I felt pressured to give the fans <laughs> what they wanted. So I did. And I, my way is to joke. I joke about everything. If I get nervous, I joke. If I'm upset, I get, I joke. And I held the microphone and went like this. Well, they took a picture and that picture is online for everyone to see. And it's horrible. Oh. It's a hor My husband saw it. He goes, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I have seen a video of you singing London Bridges Falling oh, Down the fans hard. and you were like do I have to yeah, exactly that's kind of the way I feel do I have to I was there that was awesome it from was a fan awesome. from a fan perspective I think that was maybe Karen and I's first time. I was like can you believe we're in the room with Sarah <laughs> and we're all singing London Bridges this is like I have to say when I saw dream. the when I saw the video, I was I was cheering. I was like, "Yes, she's doing it." Well, I I kind of I kind of got out of it a little bit by asking everyone to sing. Yes, you did. You did. Yes, which was a great idea that you got you got a sing along going. That it's good. that song is going to find its way into this episode. I'm, it's I'm one of find those things. It. It's it's just part of. Yeah. You know. It comes with me. Yeah. It's, it's well, Robert, Co Robert Colbert did a really interesting, he did really interesting variations on that um, sure. because it's so sad. And when Sarah dies, oh my God, that's what you hear. It's, and it's just such a sad version yeah. of that. And I get, I get choked up even thinking about it. Um, and then there's Sarah, angry Sarah, where David is like, Sarah's angry and you hear the music, but it's, distorted uh and it's played right. at a faster at a higher pitch so it sounds angry uh and they did some really interesting variations isn't that amazing that, yeah. with your theme there yeah it was really cool um do we have any upcoming uh things coming up for either one of you in terms of uh sharon you i know you mentioned uh an appearance coming up um any any anything else uh with regard to that or any other appearances that you have coming up no um i've been asked to do a couple other conventions but because they're out of state i've i've said no um it's just not the right time for me right now but um yeah. and as far as any other projects i haven't really been uh, approached right. or you know been working with anybody yeah. but i know barry is yeah, what are you doing, Barry? <laughs> well, pay attention. This is the kind of thing that like weirdos like me, uh, who have been like dreaming, like, oh, can you imagine like like working with these people, or can you imagine going to see view and seeing what's <laughs> inside there? You kind of have to pay attention to stuff like what Sharon is saying. And if you're around, if you're in the area, you can make yourself available. Listen, there's like actors who want to do stuff, but you gotta make it easy for them okay like you gotta you gotta find a way to make it so you are taking on the responsibility of including them in whatever it is you're doing and if you do that then forever you will be i'm just sitting back here while you guys are talking and i'm getting goosebumps because i'm just thinking like what 
what a weird world it is that I mean, Danielle, you must feel this sometimes when you do you just feel like, oh my God, I'm talking with Sharon Lentz. Oh my God, I'm I'm talking with Laura Parker. Like yes. Oh uh, yes. I, you know what I'm saying? There's like <laughs> Absolutely, something deep, yes. <laughs> there's some like child deep inside of you that's you're in a time machine and you're back there telling them you're not going <laughs> to believe what you're doing today. <laughs> yes. So, so look for those moments, like look for your lane to try to find a way in to make something. I, I don't have anything to pitch. You know, I, I, I mean, the, other than I'm doing the comic book and stuff and, and I may do stuff in the future, but I'm so happy and proud of the stuff that I've done and the opportunities that I've had that still, I mean, that, on a country road was done like nine years ago, and here we are <laughs> talking about it. Um, oh, are just, you serious? That yeah, long? Dude. It, it, yeah, I looked it up today. Time like, how marches long, on. How long has it been? Um, well, at least that's when the Indiegogo campaign was. We must have shot shortly after that. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, well, I look, <laughs> I'm so surprised to, that you invited me to be a part of this. And are are you kidding me? What? Abs I had to, I I how could I not uh, I was just like come on um uh, it was a great time at Seaview hanging out with you and Kara and I had a blast and I hadn't seen you since yeah. the Coast City Comic Con it had, had been a while uh, since I I had seen you so it was great we got to hang out and uh, drive down to Connecticut oh, down to Essex and then just hang out at, at the house hang out in mm -hmm. Collinwood you have been I, there too right Sharon I know Bob yeah. had mentioned that you had been there I've been there yeah I haven't been there for a while but I have been there yeah. in the past. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, that's, that's something else we have here on the East Coast. We have both Collinwoods. Mm -hmm. We have the, the right? TV Collinwood and the movie Collinwood. So, yeah, uh, man. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, and hope, hopefully I'll see you there. Are you going to be there that to the, at the next one or? Um, I think so. Yeah. I think our plans are to do both this year because we okay. hadn't done them for a while. And it's like, you know what? I miss all those people. And yeah, yeah. It, it's always like a family when you get together. Dark, Sh the Dark Shadows fandom and the Dark Shadows actors, the relationship is unlike any other fandom I I have ever seen or been a part of. It's It's something that allows somebody like Ansel to be able to just like get the, the actors want to do stuff and they're so i don't know it's it's a weird thing and i don't know how to describe it um other than to say family it really feels like family and you got people you like people you don't like and they all feel like you're related in some sort of weird way absolutely <laughs> and yeah. i've always felt that way about the dark shadows fans which is one of the the main reasons why i've stayed involved it, mm. it's it's i don't it's not like i need the adulation or the attention that, you know, of something that I did. It's not so much that I need that. It's that I want to give back to the fans because I see how excited they get, how happy it makes them. I've had women come up to me, you know, crying and, and giggling like I was one of the Beatles or something like that, <laughs> you know, and be like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm touching you. I can't believe you're here. And it, it it's just like, it's not, a pat on my back but it makes me happy to see them get so excited i'm i'm always like i'm just a person i'm, I'm just me you know <laughs> but it, yeah the fans are the most some of the most loyal fans you could ever meet and just they support projects that the actors and actresses are involved with you know whether it's it's publishing books or independent films or TV shows. Um, there's always the hardcore Dark Shadows fans you can rely on to be supportive of it. And, uh, you know, I have a Facebook page that you, I used to have two. I used to have a pro page and my, my personal page. And I actually shut down my pro page after a few years for several reasons. But, you know, my regular page is chock full of Dark Shadows fans as well as family and close friends. And you know what? There's no difference. There's no difference. We're all just Facebook friends. You know? <laughs> and they know like the dark side and they, and they see the bad things as well as the uplifting things all peppered with some dark shadow stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's pretty amazing. I, I've met people online from other countries you know, from multiple states, people I would never have anything else 
in common with or ever cross paths with. And we're, gen we're genuinely friends. You know, we private message and send things to each other and things like that. I mean, like how blessed am I to have that opportunity? So. Well, it's, it's wonderful that you're willing to be so open with your fans and share with them and be so kind to them too and and interact i i see i mean i see your posts and i see there's always outpouring of love for for you when always. you're going through difficult times and uh uh yeah dark shadows fans are fantastic they're really. so supportive yeah so supportive absolutely uh do you still have a website too i remember you had one at one point do you still have a website i do not okay. i had to shut that down for yeah not everybody is kind <laughs> oh i'm sorry oh gosh i've been hacked was... a couple of times oh. and uh because yeah. i was gonna say i i that for fans that want to get things like mm. this wonderful <laughs> sarah a little sarah uh collins bag here uh so they can get this kind of thing from you at conventions right yes okay. yes and if anyone wants autographed photos um they can contact me through facebook messenger and uh you know we'll talk great Fantastic. Well, I want to thank you both for taking the time today to chat with me. Uh, it's I've, it's been a pl I've been wanting to bring you both on for for quite a while now, so it's been really fun chatting with both of you. And uh, I hope to see you both again in person sooner rather than later. Uh, and uh, ho hopefully that will happen soon. So well, thank thanks. you again. Love you guys. Love Much you love. <laughs> Thank you.